my dear friends welcome to rajashekar classes on applied data science with python this is lecture number 357 in this lecture we will try to understand ks test two sample kolmogorov smirnov test let's learn a very interesting test called ks test k stands for kolmogorov and s stands for smirnov this is a very interesting test let's assume i have two random variables x1 and x2 this is my first random variable x1 i have another random variable x2 and let's assume x1 have n samples how many samples are there in 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 x1 let me assume there are n samples and x2 has samples or i can say observations i have m observations here i have m samples m samples or m observations in random variable x2 i have very basic question are these two random variables x1 and x2 are coming from the same distribution or not so is the distribution of x1 same as x2 this is very very important often times let me tell you why this is important recall our iris data set just try to recall iris data set where we have petal length petal width sepal length sepal width isn't it these these are the variables when we are looking at iris data set we saw the shape of this is just like uh, let me say let me assume this is the shape this is the this is a shape it's just like gaussian but if you want to determine is this distribution is actually gaussian distribution or not if i wanted to determine this distribution is actually gaussian or not if i wanted to do a test this distribution is gaussian or not what i could do is i could take my petal length pl distribution and normalize it which means i subtract the mean petal length mu pl and then divide by standard deviation what does it mean let me say petal length i am subtracting it's a mean mu pl and i am dividing by its standard deviation sigma pl if this is roughly same as normal distribution with the mean 0 and standard deviation 1 then i know the petal length random variable if it is the case this petal length random petal length random variable petal length random variable has has gaussian gaussian distribution gaussian distribution isn't it this is extremely important test isn't it this is extremely important test test this test basically say whether two random variables x1 and x2 have the same distribution let's see how the test goes first i plot cumulative probability distribution of both x1 and x2 just observe this particular graph what it says this is cumulative probability whose cumulative probability cumulative probability distribution of both x1 and x2 so this is nothing but this is cdf isn't it this is cumulative distribution function that is uh, cdf isn't it CD, uh, cdf of what cdf of both variables x1 comma x2 of course both x1 and x2 are on the same axis so let's assume my red line is the cdf of random variable x1 this red line let me assume this is cdf of random variable random variable x1 isn't it let uh, and my x1 has how many observations let me assume this x1 has n observations isn't isn't it x2 has 
m observations let me assume this one is x2 what does it mean my blue line is the cdf of x2 and which has got how many observations let me assume m observation this is the uh, what is null hypothesis here my null hypothesis in case test is what is h0 let me write here yes what is null hypothesis h0 in 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 case test is x1 and x2 x1 and x2 have same distribution have same distribution this is my null hypothesis isn't it have same distribution that is h h not h not is x1 and x2 have same distribution or they come from same distribution this is the null hypothesis then what is alternative hypothesis alternative hypothesis is they don't come from the same distribution we define what is null hypothesis first what we have to do define null hypothesis that is step number 1 step number 2 is define test statistic this is step number 1 step number 2 is define define test statistic statistic isn't it that that we have to do how will you do we will try to understand let's define the test statistic the test statistics could be like this so uh, so when i when i plot my cdf of x1 and x2 at any point i could take the difference between these two points just see i can always take difference between this this is the difference between this point and this point isn't it when i plot my cdf of x1 and x2 at any point i could take the difference between these two plots the difference between the plots is this much here this is the difference between the plots is isn't it at any point x i can get how separated just see here if i take this is the separation here it is separation here this is separation at any point x i can get i can get how separated these two cdfs imagine if these cdfs are exactly overlap then the difference is zero suppose if your n is very large let me say n is very large suppose your n is very large and assume m is also m is also just this is an assumption and m is also very large and let's say x1 and x2 are come from the same distribution and let's n could be few millions and m could be few millions and x1 and x2 are come from the same distribution in that case their cdfs roughly overlap cdfs cdfs roughly roughly overlap when they come from same distribution and your n and m is very large their cdfs roughly overlap when n and m are very large but when n and m are very are small there might has some difference because we have we only have some observations so the test statistic in case test is written as just let me show this one just see this is test statistics in case test what is this just see this is test statistics d of n comma m equal to sup of x f1 comma nx minus f2 of 2 comma mx what is this supremum how can i how can i read supremum over all x what does it mean it is supremum so it is supremum over all x let me read supremum over all excess of f1 comma nx which is nothing but cdf of my random variable x1 with n samples f2 comma m is nothing but the cdf of my random variable x2 with m samples which is nothing but in red and blue lines what is the supremum means what is the meaning of supremum supremum basically means the maximum value so for every so for various values of x 
you will get this difference. Just see, for various values of x, I am getting this difference, this difference. For various value of x, I am getting this difference. But, but which one is supremum in all these differences? This block line is supremum, isn't it? For various values of x, for various values of x, you will get the difference, this difference. What is the maximal difference? Maximal difference at any point of x is between these two plots is this is block line. This block line is related to supremum. There are so many differences between these two plots, but this is this is related to this block line becomes this block line becomes this is DNM. This block line becomes d n m m this is this is out this is our test our test statistic so your d n comma m is the test statistic what is the test statistic it is nothing but the gap between cdfs what is test statistic what is uh, what is test statistic what does it mean it is it is the gap i can say gap between gap between cdfs cumulative distribution functions of the random variable of the random variable of the random variable x1 and the random variable and the random variable variable x2 isn't it ideally if your n is very large and m is also very large let me say n is very large and m is also very large and x1 and x2 are come from the same distribution so your null hypothesis is true what is null hypothesis it means your test statistics would be null hypothesis is the, they are same your x1 and x2 are coming from the same distribution if n and m are large but your null hypothesis is false means x1 and x2 do not come from the same distribution that's what we assume just try to recall what is null hypothesis i will write here our null hypothesis h0 is x1 and x1 and x2 have the same distribution have have same distribution same distribution same distribution that is our uh, null hypothesis let me say like let me take one simple example let alpha equal to what is my alpha let me assume alpha equal to 0 0.05 that is p value i wanted to understand when will i reject null hypothesis isn't it or when will i reject my alternative hypothesis i should understand when will i reject my null hypothesis when will i reject my alternate hypothesis now the null hypothesis just see here i have a rule for large samples the null hypothesis is rejected just let me show this one just see for large samples the null hypothesis is rejected at alpha at, at level alpha if d of n comma m is greater than c alpha c of alpha into n plus m by n into m now you might ask what is your c of alpha what is this particular value isn't it let's go down let's go down and see what is c alpha just see here i have alpha correspondingly c alpha so what it says is there is table for c alpha your alpha is that may be 20 per 0 0.20 0 0.15 0 0.15 0 0.10 0 0.05 0 0.5 for different values of alpha you have your corresponding c alpha values isn't it just you can check you can check um, uh, for different values for example what we assumed here we assumed alpha equal to 0 0.5 percent 5 percent means what alpha equal to 0 0.05 that is 0 0.05 what is your c alpha value just see 0 0.05 means your c c alpha value is 1.358 i can write it as 1.36 isn't it so from this let alpha equal to 5 percent that is 0 0.05 from this table your c alpha is 1 point let it be uh, let me write this as one this as 1.36 how can i write your 
your dn m how can i write this equation dn n comma m d n comma m is greater than 1.36 into root of n plus m by m into n isn't it you you reject the you the, then if if it is the case if d of n comma m is greater than 1.36 into under root of n plus m by mn then you reject null hypothesis at which level of significance at alpha mean 0.05 level of significance let's assume let's assume my n equal to let let me assume my n equal to 1000 let me say my m equal to let me say 5000 let me assume alpha equal to 5 percent that is level of significance i already discussed what is level of significance in my previous lectures let's see what this value turns out to be i have to calculate this one 1.36 into if i calculate just try to calculate you will get approximately 0 0.047 what does it mean what happens what do, what does it mean your d of n comma m your d of n comma m is greater than 0 0.047 then you reject null hypothesis if your d of n comma m your gap between these two curves if it is greater than 0 0.047 then you reject null hypothesis at 5 percent level of significance let me change the values let me assume n equal to 50 and let me assume m equal to 30 what is my d n m n comma m is greater than what is this value what will i get here at 5 percent alpha equal to 5 percent 5 percent value is 1.358 means i am writing 1.36 into under root of 50 plus 30 by 50 into 30 just if you just calculate what value you will get approximately you will get 0 0.31 isn't it if, if d of n comma m if d of n comma m is greater than 0 0.31 then reject null hypothesis just by going from 1000 and 5000 because as you have more points this gap should be smaller isn't it if you have more points your gap is 0 0.047 gap is smaller if you have less points gap is bigger 0 0.31 isn't 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 it yes if i have fewer points 0 0.31 is that is 30 percent gap here gap is what is this gap here this gap is a point almost maybe this is point 0.2 isn't it point 0.2 but point 0.3 is massive gap for 50 observations for my random variable x1 if i have 30 observations for, ran for my random variable x2 your capital d of n comma m is greater than 0 0.31 i will reject my hypothesis null hypothesis at 5 percent level of significance just go through this particular test this test has got so many applications i will continue my lecture series in future classes on this particular data set with few on this particular test with the help of few data sets thank you very much